Hello everyone and welcome to my advanced logistics tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be continuing on from the previous one which covered the basics of logistics, what produces logistical points, how they spread and how to stop your units from starving. So in this one we're going to look at the interaction between the logistical system and the production system which is one of the less intuitive parts of the game. So you'll have to bear with me as I try and explain it and because this sort of thing is always easier when you've got an example to work with. I've taken this save, which is from one of my multiplayer games that I'm currently playing. To give some background here, this Gallia city here is my capital, and it was my first city, and then I kind of expanded out. Unfortunately, these three nations are player nations, and I didn't want to roll the dice on an early conflict with them. So I just kept expanding, but I focused my efforts to the west, and this has ended out with a very lopsided empire. The reason that this is such a problem is that the logistics in Shadow Empire work in a sort of hub system, where no matter what the actual shape of your empire, in my case a sort of elongated L shape, no matter what the actual shape, everything has to go to and from your headquarters which or your SHQ which stands for strategic headquarters so your strategic headquarters unit is the hub and everything has to go to and from the hub if you have a long trunk road with a lot of stuff units cities etc on the end of it all feeding down this sort of trunk road it can get overloaded quite easily because instead of just sending from say Echo Point here to Winniort, say Echo Point had some excess metal and Winniort needed metal, it wouldn't get sent to there, it would get sent all the way back to the capital, burning logistics the whole way before the next turn Winniort would request metal and the same thing would happen, it would be sent back all the way along here. And this is just a limitation of the way the supply system is modelled in the game and I'm afraid there's not much we can do about it. Uh, so, the first thing we need to know about it is this supply system. We have a logistical network throughout the Empire. You can see the sort of purple lines, just to highlight them a bit better. And in most games, if you click on, in this game in particular, you click on your SHQ and it gives you this list of what resources you have. Now most games, that's it. That's just the resources you have for this turn. You can spend them and then they'll be spent on upkeep or production or whatever it is. But in Shadow Empire, there's a bit of a wrinkle to this system because not only does the SHQ have an inventory, and this is your primary inventory, your sort of central repository of resources which everyone sends stuff to and takes stuff from, the zones themselves have inventories and try and manage their own production and resources. So let's just look at it. If we get to find them, you go to the bottom tab and you click items while you clicked on a zone. And that shows, this is well, in this particular case, this is my capital and it shows you what they've consumed, what they've output, what they've produced the turn and how much they're trying to stockpile in anticipation of next, next turn's needs. This information is also available in the management tab. You just go click on a zone and go collapse or expand and it's the same thing here but I'm going to do it from the main screen because it's a little more easy to explain. So every zone, every turn basically has its own production cycle. Um, in the case of this zone it's doing all right. It's the capital, it has recycling buildings, it has industry, it has food, it has basically everything you could need so it's relatively self-sufficient. So that it only deals with the headquarters unit when it needs something or has excess stock it wants to send off. And to look at that, let's look at what we're doing in the zone this turn, which is we're building a hydroponics and we're also in the process of building a truck station. So that's fine dandy. And if you look at the number of metal used, we'll just use this as an example. We've got 433 metal used. So we look at the consumption of the zone for this turn 433 metal that's fine they had 433 metal available so it is not an issue and a good chunk of that is because it 
is producing in excess so it has extra metal to basically hand off to the headquarters every turn and it means it's also anticipating its needs for next turn which because it, it's still building the same assets it thinks it's going to need another 433 which is fine but the wrinkle in the system is that you may be producing a lot of metal in the zone but this consumption happens before the production and this is this needs to be happening because the consumption also includes things like buildings which consume resources to build other resources like for example a heavy industry which I thought I had here but perhaps I don't anyway some buildings consume resources to produce other ones like heavy industry high tech etc so this stockpile in which it has 266 and 433 relative uh, for respectively industry and metal is what it's going to have at the start of the start of next turn and then if it goes to run its production thinks it doesn't have enough it's going to call out to the SHQ which is what it's done this turn for machines and high-tech parts because there's no source of them it goes help and then the SHQ sends it to them using logistical points or in this case it doesn't because it's sitting in the same hex as the SHQ but for most zones it would and it sends these along and then they're used to consume this and produce the buildings so what happens if through not having enough stock or the SHQ not having enough there just isn't the resources needed and let's have a look at this other city here where that is happening now you think might look at this and say you've got 2400 metal just sitting in your SHQ why does it fail and as you can see these yellow highlighted ones means that there's not enough of it available to do full production and if you look at the assets themselves yeah we've got a failure of consumption so we've only produced 18% of a full turn's worth for these various assets that I'm building and the reason for this particular instance is that the zone only produces 92 of its own and so it had that 92 stockpiled from last turn and it needed 1400 so it requested those from the SHQ but the SHQ despite having more than 1400 now didn't have more than 1400 at the start of the turn because if you look at that it says end of last round stocks which is 321 and it dispatched all of those all that metal to various zones that were asking for it and in this case this this Galt city or zone uh, received 141 of that despite there being plenty now there wasn't at the end of last turn which was largely because I had spent it all on tanks because I'm fighting a war and that's just what you do so if I left it alone this turn didn't build anything and ended the turn with that 2500 next turn it would be like yep sure off you go and it would dispatch a lot of that metal out unfortunately uh, it didn't happen this turn so we didn't get full production this is down to how things get sent between zones because all this this that had because that happens in a specific order which you can check by looking at your SHQ unit because as I, if you remember I said everything goes through your SHQ unit and this is the order it happens in first the zone calls out for aid or resources and the SHQ tries to dispatch them to all the zones from the stockpile that it has at the end of the previous turn and then next the SHQ goes okay what do my units need and the units mostly need um, as you can see ammo and food so that's fine it sends off the ammo and food and only then after that has all been done does the zone send stuff to the SHQ and you can see this sort of extremely large number compared to the other numbers and that is because each zone generates 5,000 water just for being next to a lake um, so luckily water is free and doesn't cost logistical points to move so it doesn't actually go up your network it just 
makes that number very large. And then because it's run out of logistics in this particular case, it didn't deliver any replacements. And you can see this lack of logistics by going to the map layers bar and looking at the bottlenecks tab. These black ones are bad, basically. And you might think, well, it's a bit odd because most of the network is fine. It's just these two bits. And that is because everything has to go to and from the SHQ. So let's have a look at, for example, the city of Winniort. Now, Winniort is producing a truly stupendous amount of metal every turn, which is great. But unfortunately, the amount of logistical points available between Winniort and the SHQ are only enough to ship about half of what it produces. So it makes a stockpile every turn. It builds up a bigger and bigger stockpile of everything, essentially. Metals, recruits, uh, rare metals, everything it produces it is forced to stockpile because it doesn't have enough logistical capacity between them two to dispatch them. Um, this can be good and bad because occasionally you can get like a pleasant surprise, but usually it means your logistical network just simply isn't up to scratch. And once you've identified this, there's a few things you can do to fix it. The primary one I would say is build more assets and that's what I'm doing here. I'm building more truck stations, I'm updating to rail. Everyone is just along this, everyone along this sort of trunk road is producing as much logistical points as they can and upgrading all their buildings. However, if that's not enough or you need a faster response, there is one trick that you can do. You can go and you can look at your SHQ unit, which has refused to be selected, there we go. And you can check and see what is failing. So a lot of this is failing. The zone deliveries are failing. The replacements are failing. And then you can look why. And a lot of that is just because there simply isn't enough logistical net points, especially for replacements. Now, you can go to the SHQ and back to the main tab on the right here. There's a unit admin button and this unit admin button has this logistical limitations and you'll notice that these four things are the same as the ones you get when you click on the logistical data of the SHQ and that's because they are limits to how much of a percent it's allowed to spend of its total logistics along each route on for example sending stuff to zones, sending stuff to units receiving things from zones and sending replacements units. And in my case, I've got it set so that 40%, 30% and 30% adds up to 100. So it does it in this order, right? And because it's completely chocolate, the logistical network is at its limit, it never reaches the point where it's sending replacements without, with any spare points. So. If I was desperate for replacement, which I kind of am to be honest, some of my units are, are a bit battered, I could reduce the maximums here. And this would, as you can see, this would sum up to 90%. And you don't need to worry if your percentages don't add to 100 because if there's any excess, they will go back to the start and redistribute them again. Um, but if they're higher for example you could just put 100 percent and it would use up to 100 percent of its logistical capacity sending stuff to zones i don't recommend doing that it wouldn't be great for actually receiving stuff or your units may starve if your logistic logistical network is in that poor shape um that's the first thing you can do but that doesn't that can solve the problem and make sure everything is getting a bit of something but it also it doesn't solve the main issue which is causing this is that everything goes all the way back and then all the way back out even when it say it only had to travel a little bit to fix that you can move to a hub model um, with multiple hubs and the way to do that is to make another SHQ unit let's go look at Winnie Winnie is like on a big central city over in this sec in this sort of western half and as you can see it's still got a decent amount of logistical capacity to all these connections. So what we could do here is go to 
race formation on the city and hiding in race formation there's a little tab that says new shq so we'll produce that and that will make shq2 now as you can see it also has an inventory and units and everything that the first one has so you can click that you've got thousands and thousands of everything you can click that and you have nothing now it doesn't have anything yet but what we can do is all the zones have a zone shq button and we will assign when you we will assign echo point we will assign everything on the western half of the empire to report to the second hq so when they're sending re excess resources they're just going to send them to Winniort and also try and request resources from Winniort so they don't go all the way back there and clog everything up we could also switch our unit headquarters all the way back as well um, in this case I don't think I want to do that uh, it's not completely necessary and it's often better to try and keep all your guys in one headquarters unit because if you have a good SHQ commander, like this guy, he's all right, but I have invested in him quite heavily and he's got the experience to improve his various stats. Um, I don't want to have to put a green commander in the second headquarters unit and then lose those bonuses that this guy's get this first guy is giving to all the troops. So it's possible to have one for units and sort of a section of the empire and then one for the other one just to fix logistical issues. It's also possible to use this transfer button to send resources between SHQs as long as there's a logistical link. Uh, in this case, there isn't. So <laughs> unsurprisingly, as you can see, these, these bottlenecks here are cutting them off. Right, so that is the primary cause of all these sort of issues that people have where things don't properly build. And that's one, there's, there's two ways of fixing it, like I've said, but yeah, like previously the like, like I previously addressed, the primary what, one that you wanna do is just have more logistical capacity and maybe prune your network down with traffic lights. And that's what I'm gonna go on to now is traffic lights and how to use them. Now, You'll see traffic lights, but you can press the T hotkey or go into logistics mode, and that's these little bars everywhere. They essentially stop you wasting logistics. Now, looking at the flow next turn, I go, I can look at the bottlenecks and I can look at the previews and say, look, I have plenty of spare capacity going that way. So I want to send more in this direction. And to do that, I'll click on the headquarters and I'll increase to all. I will block all rail, sorry, all all of my logistical points going out to that northeast, which aren't pull points. And that reduces the amount of projector for next turn and sends them off in the other directions. And that, that will help out a little bit more. I've done, as you can see, I've done similar things along the length of the network here. I've got this completely blocking all points coming going that direction because this has its own truck station and it feeds in here and you just basically it's a it's a thing you've got to play with a little bit till you understand it and the p key is the key to understanding it because that shows your prediction of next turn and you can see how it changes as you prune various bits uh, this is a pretty extreme example of you can see the amount of them that i have because there's these roads i don't want to get rid of that because they go through mountains but I am also struggling quite a lot. You can see the logistical issues here. I'm just barely managing to get enough food to all my units, but I can't get enough replacements to them. As you can see, these units are hugely under strength. I can't fill out this tank unit. Um, these guys can't request enough metal to actually produce the things that they're trying to produce. And overall, yeah, having these logistical issues is causing me an absolute headache. Uh, fixing it though will take a few turns this is actually a few turns where behind where I was behind in the game um, and eventually I did fix it <laughs> without having to resort to a second SHQ uh, primarily it involved a little bit more traffic light pruning and just lots more trucks and trains so yeah I hope you've found this useful uh, I was going to go and try and do an explanation of air bridges and a few other little bits but this is getting quite enough Quite long enough already so i'm gonna cut it short and thanks a lot for watching everyone and 
I hope it's been useful and I will see you soon.